această seară la un hotel minunat în centrul Bucureștiului, Rembrandt. Ne vedem cu, sper, toți cei 8 lectori de la conferința Fearless. E o mândrie să se întâmple conferința Fearless 2015 în București și asta poate pentru că sunt mulți fotografi foarte talentați în vârful ierarhiei în acest catalog de fotografie de valoare. Abia aștept să începem interviul. Ne-am pregătit câte 3-4 întrebări pentru fiecare lector. Sper să-mi scuzați engleza nefolosită de mult, e cam rucinită, dar ne vom descurca până la urmă. Mulțumesc! Don't be afraid. <laughs> I visited your website and I uh, read there that you were so proud to be a wedding photographer. Why is that? Why is that? Yes. Because um, there are a lot worse things to be <laughs> um, than a wedding photographer for me. Um, I just love the, the heightened emotions of the day and uh, just sort of, really what, what's amazing is when I get to witness real emotions unfolding before me. Um, so I feel like a, a little bit of an insider yeah, when those things happen and it's just like you kind of have to pinch yourself that this is what you're getting paid to do. Um, so when things all come together, that's that's the best for me, always. So I'm, anytime I can find a, um, a real, genuine moment happening, that's always just um, the icing on the cake, more so now than, than making a great clever, creative portrait. I really want to find those moments. Yeah. Um, also visiting your website, a lot of images are, let's say, minimalist, with lots Minimal, of, yes. yeah, lots of uh, negative space. Right. Do you feel like it's, uh, this kind of photography is well understood by your clients, or is just your thing? Um, I don't know if it's understood, but they might be Um, sort of responding to it. I don't know if they understand exactly why, which is okay. They don't have to understand why. Um, I tend to try to try to simplify my images into the, the smallest, you know, barest minimum I can, and sort of hopefully let their emotions and interactions sort of carry the photo. Yeah. So it's not as much about uh, where we are. It's just a clean, clean background, yes. and let them do the work. Yeah, because in the last years, a lot of images on the web uh, tend to be overloaded with, uh, I don't know, great, great ar architecture. Or yes, something. I, I see that as well sometimes, and and which is fine, you know, because you can. It's probably not the only image they're going to supply the client, so yeah, it's fine. Yeah, But I wish I could see some of those great, amazing eye candy images would still have emotion between the couple, like that last piece of the puzzle mm -hmm. just thrown in there would be really great. Um, would you define yourself as a successful wedding photographer? Well, successful in my own, with my own definition, yes. I don't know outwardly what, what people's definition of success for me. It's just uh, being creative, being proud of my work, and getting paid to do something that I, I love to do. That's successful for me. And I just, I follow that. That's sort of my guideline, you know, just do what I'm drawn to, what I'm responding to, and then let clients find that, find that and then we're a good fit. Do that a lot. <laughs> Thank you so Just much. Just realize that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, you don't know who I am, and uh, I want to tell you about this. Because sure, we sure. Have, uh, wedding stuff is a small community of wedding photographers and videographers, mm -hmm. which is aimed to improve education among us. Okay, and, great. Uh, yeah, just uh, feeling proud that we do what we do in Romania. Because in Romania, this occupation is uh, seen like uh, hey, get a real job. Mm -hmm. like yeah, okay. And, uh, and we're just trying to yeah. to bring some value, not. Uh, learn how to properly compose an image, but right. just to elevate the, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. And I think that's awesome, and a lot of the, some of the countries that I have visited, it seems to be a similar yeah. issue, that the level of work is going up, but the clients don't value it, so you have to educate them yes. Yes. why this is different, why this is important, yeah. and eventually, yeah, you'll get there as well. And I do think it's, it's super important to have people come to things like this, um, and know. sort of put the money in their brain, not in the gear, because yeah. that's, that's, that's where the, the change will happen, yeah. up here, not, not down here. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so ah, much. You're welcome.
It wasn't but, painful, no? No, not at all. Not you all. understood me? Yes, no problem at all. Okay. You're Thank fine. You. No. Suntem aici cu Irina de la Cromatica și prima întrebare oarecum banală ar fi, de ce Cromatica? De ce Cromatica? Da. De ce nu uh, Ion Fotografie sau Irina Fotografie? Aș vrea să fie o poveste interesantă, dar nu e. De fapt, Cromatica era un nume gândit pentru altceva, pentru o altă firmă. Este un nume foarte vechi, ales înainte ca noi să ne ocupăm de fotografie. Era pentru niște servicii de design. Numai că între timp planurile s-au schimbat, dar am rămas atașați de numele Cromatica și e aproape întâmplat. Da, care se potrivește, mie îmi place mult. E, e, mai, e mai ușor sau mai complicat să lucrezi în doi în fotografia de notă? Pentru mine e întotdeauna mai... Da, și mai ușor, clar mai plăcut, mai interesant și ai altă libertate, poți să te joci mult mai mult. Asta e partea cea mai bună. Dar poți să te un cuplu. Da. Când vine vorba de viață de familie și de viață profesională, nu tind lucrurile să se, nu știu, combine, să, să nu mai faceți diferența între ele? Nu trebuie să facem diferența no? între ele. Nu, nu, e bine așa cum e. e. E foarte bine că ne știm de 20 de ani și că nu e nevoie să vorbim. Mulțumim. Nu avem nevoie de căști, nu avem nevoie de nimic, nici măcar de o privire. Pur și simplu știu ce face Robert, chiar dacă nu mă uit la el. Asta nu e foarte bine pentru el. Am ochi peste tot. Nu, e, e foarte plăcut să lucrăm așa și când unul dintre noi se simte inspirat și are o idee mai trăsnită, celălalt preia da. fotografiile safe, stă în poziția cea mai sigură și celălalt se joacă, experimentează și facem asta tot timpul, nu ne plictisim și nu există un loc în care să nu ne simțim bine, pentru că cel puțin suntem unul cu celălalt. Da. E, da, e întotdeauna ajutăm, întotdeauna gândim, întotdeauna ne ajutăm. Am făcut nunți inclusiv cu piciorul rupt și n-a știut nimic. Nu v-ați săturat unul de altul? La nuntă mă refer. La nuntă? Nu, la nuntă nu. <laughs> la nuntă nu. <laughs> spune cât de... Uh, să zic, mulțumitor, așa sufletește, este să aduci o asemenea garnitură de fotografi foarte vestiți în România să, nu știu, contribui la educația fotografului român de nuntă. Foto... Educația fotografului român e, e una bună. Asta se vede în interesul care există nu doar pentru fearless, pentru tot felul de competiții internaționale, pentru workshop-uri. Toată lumea investește foarte mult în România, în educație, chiar în, mă refer la fotografie. Și asta e o chestie extraordinară. În București sunt cei mai mulți fotografi les din or Nu există niciun oraș în lume cu atât de mulți fotografi les. Cel puțin la un moment dat așa era. Și cred că asta spune ceva. Și presupun că a fost și unul din motivele pentru care conferința se ține aici. Iar noi ne-am bucurat foarte tare să dăm un de ajutor cu organizarea. De fapt, asta e, e tot ce am făcut și nu ar fi fost aici. Dacă nu eram atât de mulți fotografi, atât de entuziaști și de implicați și de... Asta nu putea să facă un fotograf sau doi sau trei, asta... Face o comunitate. Da, da. Și cred că suntem una din ce în ce mai, mai mare și mai... Da. Câte premii fierile să aveți? Nu mai știu. Ah. Nu pentru că sunt atât de multe, ci pentru că m-am supărat foarte tare la ultima ediție, că Robert a luat trei și eu n-am luat nicio. Ah. Și m-am trecut după ce am condus tot anul. Îți mulțumesc foarte mult. Nu vă mulțumesc, mulțumesc mult. Ah. I wanted to ask you, how was your day today? Yeah. Uh, we, uh, we, we had a workshop today, so it was busy, working with a student helping her become a wedding photographer. You talked about uh, wedding photography and marriage. Oh, yeah. And the relationship or the yeah. resemblance between them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what happens is that um, there's a lot of similarities between being a wedding photographer and being um, in a relationship. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things, for example, like when you're looking for clients, it's uh, like online dating. Really? Kind of. Because it's, because when you present yourself in a profile online, 
you have to be very specific about what you want. For example, let's say that you say uh, you're looking for a vegetarian that likes to go hunting, for example. Or, uh, I never thought of it. Yeah. yeah so you have to be specific about what you want and in, in, uh, about who you are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you also, I saw in the listing of your uh, speeches that you talked about uh, wedding photography as a business. But yes. let me ask you something. If a wedding photographer is doing photography, uh, retouching, uh, office work, driving, answering the phone, uh, is this a business? Or well, it's a, you know, it's, it is a business because it's the business of, of wedding photography. You make money out of it and that's how you survive, that's how you eat, right? It could be a job, a really hard job. Not yeah, it's, it is it's a job and it's a business too. But what happens is, okay, so let's say this, right? When you become a wedding photographer, what are the things that you want to do all day? You want to shoot all day, Yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, but and you can. end up, you cannot, you have to do all these things, right? You have to edit, you have to talk to clients and everything, right? Yeah. So in a, when you're in a relationship, what do you want to do all day? You want to have yeah. sex all day, Yeah. right? But you cannot. Right? So what you gotta do? You have to like do the dishes, you have to cut the trash, you have to do all these things, right? Too. Drive the kids to school. You drive the kids to school, you gotta do all the things that you don't, don't know, don't wanna do, but you gotta do in order to. It's really interesting your yeah. point of view. Yeah. So it's a, there are a lot of similarities between the two. I'm sure no one asked you this. When you're saying wedding photographer, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Uh, it comes a, a guy or a girl with a camera at a wedding. Yeah, nothing like, more, nothing less? Nothing more, nothing less. Just uh, capturing that. That's uh, this professional photographers and there's like amateur photographers. Yeah. Uh, so a professional photographer is the one that is doing it and he's trying to do a better job every time and working hard to do it. Good luck with it. Eh? Thank you. Good, Good luck. You're welcome. It. Thank you. You're welcome, Daniel. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. When, when I say fearless, I'm thinking of you as the soul of fearless. Why fearless? Why not? Are you afraid of brides? Or why, why is fearless this name? Why the name fearless? Yeah. It's the philosophy that we should take when we take on the task of photographing weddings. It's not physically fearless, it's mentally fearless, right? Yeah. It's the fact that we want to be artists and we want to do our best for our clients and not just what we see or what everyone thinks we should do. It's reaching deep inside, being an artist, and also tell the story of the wedding day honestly, truthfully, and in the most artistic way possible. And all our fears kind of keep us from doing that. Our fears of failure, fears of rejection, yeah. Yeah, fears of uh, people not accepting our work. All those fears keep us into shooting really boring pictures. And when we break out of that, we can make more interesting photographs for our clients. No, it's, uh, it's, uh, for a long time, I thought, why fearless? And, and you gave me all the answers now. And it's uh, really interesting. Yeah. It's, a, it's a proper name. For it. Yeah, I, I mean, we can be fearless in anything we do. It just happens to be wedding photography, but we can be fearless architects, fearless chefs. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Why in Bucharest this year? I love, I love Romanian photographers. I've been here before and I'm really impressed with how much they embrace photography yeah. and how much they are a community together. And I think that um, for this year, you know, we wanted to come here and celebrate that. But we've been in Amsterdam before for the conferences. Yeah, and so we moved around Europe and um, it's just this year that, that I thought personally that I wanted to bring this community together. In the press. Because I'm really thrilled about being here. Oh, thank here, you. Being here yeah. uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, where would you place education uh, when thinking about wedding photographers' growth development? Education? education? Yeah, on a scale of 1 to uh, 10. Yeah. I think uh, obviously education is really important because we want to grow individually as people, right? We want to grow in our art and we want to do it mindfully, meaning that we want to do it with, with a plan not just randomly. Yeah. So education, it can be formal education, it can be in a university, it can be in a class, it can be with a program, or it can be something that people do individually at home by themselves or with a small group or individual workshops. Um, you know. 
So do you place the same, um, do you think that formal education has the same power to, you know, make a photographer successful that... Uh, I think it could. Yeah? I think it's good. And I think people make whatever they want to make out of their, on their own education. So you can go to university and succeed or not succeed, and that's up to you how much you want to, you know, how much you want to get out of it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, John. Do you think that in some point in the future you'll be coming back to Romania for a conference, Felix conference? I don't know, I could. Yeah. I could, you, you know. I mean, Europe's so big that, yeah. I mean, we have a lot of choices that we love to see. We love to see as much of Europe as we can. And we do want, you know, we plan to have one in Europe per year, so we're trying to, as yeah. long as there's interest, we'll be here. Interest is there. Hey, Romania, a lot of Romanians are uh, listed in here. This, uh, yeah, no, no, it's, great. it's fantastic. It's a really great community, and I really enjoy looking at the work that comes out of Romania. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck. Right. I'm from Wedding Stuff, which is a small, let's say, Romanian community of wedding and videographer. Uh, photographer, photographers and videographers, and we are trying to push uh, for kind of education. Oh, okay. Uh, that's why you know, our friends are helping fearless to come to Bucharest, and uh, I thought it would be a great idea to talk to you about this. I read in your in the website fearless conference website. I read something about uh, you speaking. Uh, about motivation, about uh, finding uh, again your passion if you lost it. Actually, last year I felt like I lost it. I felt like I, why I'm doing this, and uh, uh, I was thinking about coming to hear you at the conference. What would you be telling me if I lost my passion? You do photography and video? Yeah, no, just photography. Just photography. Yeah. Um, so probably before you became a wedding photographer, you just did photography for fun? Yeah. Um, what did you take pictures of? Uh, people. And mm -hmm. Like street? Like street, like kids, like families, like just for fun. Portrait? Yeah. A portrait or more a documentary? Uh, both. Oh, okay. So... A short answer. Yeah. But basically, when you first started taking pictures, you were having a lot of fun. Yes. And you had a lot of freedom. Yeah. And you ha were very curious, and you were very experimental. So um, then, what happened is you started to get a lot of clients, and you start to feel more pressure. Yes. And you start to feel more restricted. Um, it's and sometimes it's not fun. Yeah. Right? And sometimes it feels like Ugh. just a job. I want to go home. Yeah. So I think it maybe it doesn't always feel like like it, but I think that you can um, recreate or rediscover the feeling you initially had before you had any clients. Um, How do I do that? Right. So it's not even a matter of what you do, it's a matter of what you don't do. So it's, it, it requires that you um, don't think too much. And you don't think too much about uh, the things, to delete things in the future. Things like, is it going to be published? Is anybody going to like it? Is it going to win an award? Those kinds of things. When you're shooting, obviously at a wedding there are things that you have to do that are just for the client, like the, the posed group shots and the certain things. But you have, you're there for all day, so you have a lot of time when you can still be playful and experimental and have fun. It means like giving up a little bit of the uh, self-conscious, judgmental kind of thinking. Um, and uh, some people do it naturally. Yeah, I, I find it hard to, to do it without planning to do it. Just play? Yeah. You say, just yeah. Play. So you have to... Okay, so one thing that will help is if you shoot on... If you shoot when you're not working, just shoot for fun, which is of your family or whoever. And you know what? A lot of photographers, when they do that, it's with their phone. 
Yeah, like the pictures they take with a phone are the most fun because there's no client. So a lot of photographers, their pictures they take with their phone are really loose and spontaneous. And that's when they're really having fun is with their phone. So it could be with your phone or it could be with your regular camera. It doesn't matter. But as long as you keep doing something, something playful where you don't care how it turns out, and keep doing that during the week when you don't have clients, you will, you, it will help you to remember how that feels so that when you show up on the job, you, you can um, allow yourself to feel m more playful. And, and uh, it, it requires, it means that some of the things you're going to do, will, are gonna, you're going to mess it up. Yeah. So you have to be ready to mess it up. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah. 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 I already messed it up. You have to somewhere. make some mistakes. It's, it's required. You have to make some mistakes to, in order to... Um, to be fearless, to let's say. <laughs> yeah, to reconnect with that kind of playful, curious side. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I'll try to remember that I, I have it on video. So. Okay. Uh, do you think that being a woman is an advantage uh, regarding wedding photography? It, is it easier for a woman to shoot a wedding or for uh, a man? Let's say to connect emotionally with the bride and uh, it's easier for you or it's not? Is it the same? Well, I think that Women and men have different perspectives. It's neither one is easier or harder, but different. Yeah. Um, but along with everything else, um, where you grow up, where you're from, your height, yeah, all kinds of things about you, everything that has happened to you until that moment affects your perspective and your point of view. Um, we still live in a world where uh, not at the wedding, but in the whole photography world, the men are getting more recognition. Like if you just even look at the lineups of speakers at these conferences, it tends to be more men, usually. Um, or even uh, if you look at wherever you live, um, most places, if you look at the highest paid wedding photographers, there still tend to be men than women. Um, so in the world, there's still... Um, there's still a, like a prejudice yeah. towards men, but in the in the moment of taking a photo, um, I think it's it's just a different. Everybody has a different point of view. Yeah, okay. yeah. I always felt like uh, uh, men can't connect so well with the bride during the wedding day, and uh, being a woman would help a lot because you understand better what she needs, what she thinks. At least that's what I'm thinking. You know, I thought always thought that it's easier for you. I wanted to be a woman at some points. Yeah. What do you think about the future of wedding photography internationally? Will we be still shooting weddings in five years from now, or to be 3D video or something else? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Because it's your it's your occupation. Or well, video is not new. Yeah. Um, I mean, wedding video has been around probably 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. Right so now, so it's probably not not much is going to change. People want both. You know, some Vogue covers were stills from a video? Oh, no, I didn't know that. Yeah. This is frightening. Yeah, they just filmed the whole session and grabbed some stills from the video and boom, the Vogue cover. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, when will we be speaking at the conference? Oh, uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Good luck with that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm Daniel. Okay. You <laughs> have met. And uh, you have a yeah. chance, yeah. yeah. I'm from a small wedding um, community, the uh, wedding, not wedding, but wedding photography and videography community in Romania. Mm -hmm. And uh, we met today because we want to push for better education all the time inside mm -hmm. our community. So it's really nice talking to you. Uh, being from Poland, yeah. closer to us than US. Or Say Australia. Uh, what's, what was the 
what was your way to being a successful photography, wedding photography studio? Because you're so Western Europe, it's harder for us to go there and get many international jobs. How do you do it? It's uh, if we tell you uh, all. We tell you our presentation because it's no, a just, subject of our presentation. Just, 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 just uh, be honest with you. Just be honest with you and uh, and, and trust trust in you. Yeah. And don't look at on you know, other world. Just just do your job. What you do. Just, just look just, at others. Yeah. Just don't look at others. Yeah. Just find your strength and and then use to it. It's very so it's very simple. Just find your strongest point. Be used to it and be honest. How can we trust in you if you don't know what you're doing or what you're doing? If you're not uh, looking at others? So, okay, we, we didn't start as photography from wedding photography because we had a much longer experience and background. Our background actually is we were a photo journalist, we, yes. we were working for press and press agencies. Yes. So, oh, for years, we. Uh, when Polish market. Um, yeah, just, just call up. Just press, 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 press. We had to transfer. Yeah. Yeah. It was hard, it was easy for you? Uh, it was very easy. Very easy, and because we nice. use our, you know, our skills, uh, which was very solid, like basic solid, and, uh, and just, just use it in different events, that's all. But you know, we uh, worked for the biggest newspaper in Poland, and we worked on big event and, and politician event and cultural event. Time pressure is very um, hard. Yeah, I know what you mean. And yeah. we, we work always under the pressure. And that experience gives us uh, a lot when we're talking about the wedding. So uh, we know how to take the opportunity from and uh, take a shot. So it's just this one. Is it, an, is it an, an advantage working as a couple? Of course. Living as a couple is different. It's the same. Like walking, drinking, you know, traveling, yeah, you sitting know. here. <laughs> I heard some couples uh, talking to me about this and they said, okay, we argue all the time which is the best angle, the best camera, the best blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And some other couples are sort of like uh, Chromatica, like Irina. Mm -hmm. uh, she said it's really easy and fun for us to work together in the same job. Is it the same for you? It's easy. We need just At the very beginning, it wasn't as easy as it is because we are together for nine years and we work together for nine years and we met at work actually in the press agency. So <laughs> we were a little bit competitive. <laughs> at the beginning, very. Because even like even, even more than a bit? Yes. Um, we were very competitive. We learned how to cooperate. So. Sometimes when we so something mm -hmm. in, the, in the scene, we attack the scene from yes. some opposite, different yeah. in a way, yeah. and it was kind of funny. Yeah. And when um, we and look we still at the fight for the best picture, the best. it's our private, you know, competition <laughs> context every weekend, so it's uh, it's kind of fun. You're going to speak about basic notions of humanity that help to be a better storyteller. Yes. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> That's a no, just 30, 30, 30 seconds, uh, 10 seconds. Uh, wow. If you, if you want to enjoy your work every weekend, you need to um, concentrate on fundamental things. Not about the cameras, not about the exposure. Uh, you just need to be sure what you want to tell the people about your work, about the uh, intruder of your work. And this is the secret. It's very simple. No, the secrets are really simple all the time. Okay, I have a simple, simple answer. You have to like people you work with. Yes. And you need to respect the people and be uh, curious about the people. Oh, that's okay. And this doesn't that's it. You see, you learn to do this. Oh, wow. Working for a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> no, because you know, uh, being a photographer is uh, being a human. Is uh, being very respectful to, for, for other feelings because we work with people and everything is about it, not about the technical uh, stuff, not so about the. Same the like with trip to Romania, we could fly, but we decided to, to take a car and spend two days in a car looking around. And try and try in our bad roads. Okay. Yes, we have it. Why not? Course. You have, you know, in Romania is uh, so many fantastic, smiling Amazing people. Views. Amazing view, and everything was mm -hmm. like a. Fresh breeze, and just just go through the mountains. Just 
say the same thing when going to Poland. Yeah, you will be surprised. You cross the line. Really? Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. wow. So you understand us? Yeah, maybe more sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just, no, we just, just curious uh, the country and curious the people. So we don't hurry too much. Just, just smoothly it's go through. Time. Yeah, because you know there, uh, there's no leader. There's not a goal. Yeah. Just, just the travel. This is a the thing. Uh, going there. It's the yeah, thing. going. To speak. Yes, I did the same thank for. You. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Candice, you've been a photojournalist for Chicago Tribune. Tribune for eleven years. Yes. How did this help you be a better photographer, wedding photographer? Um, it gives me. It offered me the experience. Shooting five days a week, three assignments a day. Uh, you don't know where you go. You don't know what you will do. You are given a, an address and you go. So there's no opportunity to preconceive. You have to jump in and, and, and find the story. And that's what I do with weddings. Yeah. Uh, how can one let's say compete with you with such a background, with 11 years of being a photojournalist. How I think can I do it? You can, because everybody has their own vision. Everybody has their own style. Um, someone might not be as comfortable with documentary photography, but they might be more specialized with fine art portraiture. Um, I am trained to capture moments. I am trained to work closely and um, to bond with my subject. Um, I think someone else might be more comfortable with a longer lens, but they'll capture something that I didn't get. I think that's a, the, the, the nicest thing about photography, is that there is something for everyone. Yeah, something different from everybody. For everyone. Uh, yeah, I, I read in your presentation brief at the conference that you're going to talk about what do you think before pressing the shoe? Just give me three ideas that cross your mind. Okay. Um, pay attention to your background. Pay more attention to your background than you do your foreground. Avoid a cluttered background by getting the camera low. Um, pay attention to all four corners of your frame. When was the last time you looked at all four corners before you hit the button? Yesterday. <laughs> Good for you. Um, compose and wait. And by that, I mean if your photos aren't strong enough, you didn't get close enough, or you didn't wait long enough. Compose and wait. Uh, Give me some videos, so uh, I remember that. <laughs> Will you be there tomorrow? <laughs> But do, have you have you seen any Romanian wedding photography work? I have, and the hours are just brutal. I don't know how you don't take a nap underneath the dinner table during the during the <laughs> several course meals, and um, it would have to be a very big challenge to stay creative. Twenty-four hours. When you're that exhausted, yeah. I know because they, I absolutely love the preparations part of the wedding because I'm uh, I'm not tired, uh, you know. And when we reach the party, everybody's a bit creativity is a bit low, but some people do it, and uh, I know that a lot of Romanian photographers are in fearless, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to know from Ui uh, what. Why, why are you here in Bucharest? And he told me that uh, uh, because we went to Amsterdam, we thought about trying something else. But why are you here? Why are you teaching Romanian photographers? Because I can help. Um, and because I love the people and I love this country. I've, uh, I w had an opportunity to, um, go to go to Brazov since I've been here. Yeah actually see some of this amazing country. Um, and that's why I'm here. I'm a natural teacher for a living, as well as a wedding photographer, and this is what I can do to help.
Thank you so much. Thank Education you. Education is our main goal too. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I are you going to be there tomorrow? No. Oh. Unfortunately not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have many friends uh, there and they, told, they will tell me oh, about it. Okay, yeah. they're very nice to meet you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Carlo, Carlo Carlo. Carlo it's Carlo. such a Hollywood name. Such a Hollywood name. An actor. Hollywood. Yeah, I thought oh. you were an actor. Carlo Carletti. Okay. Carlo Carletti. Sounds from really well. From Italy. Italy. Ever been to Italy? Yes, several well. times. Yeah. I've been to Rome, I've been to Tuscany. I've been to Tuscany for a week with Monte you Zucker. From, you know Monte Zucker? I come from Tuscany. I come from Florence. Yeah, I've been to Florence. Yeah. I've been to Venice. I've been to Rome. I've been to uh, actually an Italian waiter kissed me on my lips. Oh, Italian waiter? Yes. I don't know why. <laughs> I was complaining and he just came and kissed me. Okay. You are right. Since then, I never. Uh, I will never. I, I swear, I never go to Italy again. But uh, next year we'll be moving in Tuscany. Yeah, for, yeah, we'll be moving there. I'm sorry for my bad English because my English is not good. Ah, uh, don't worry. So the reason Why I ask it you if uh, you speak in Italian. Uh, no, I, I will speak in English. You can say whatever in Italian. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll try. <laughs> People are saying that you elevated wedding photography to art. Oh. Yeah, People read say it. this. Yeah, I read about this. How? Maybe they talk about the, the, the fact that I, in Italy I published the last year, at the end of mm, two years ago, just to be correct, a book with an important major Italian publisher, uh, with an important photography curator that selected my work as an artistic word is an important point in my career because this Dennis Kut is a very famous curator but he work in photography not in the field of wedding, wedding yeah. in the, the, the important as usual the important field of photography as a reportage fashion or architecture this kind of thing. he selected my work because he's, he, he think that my work was an artistic work independently of the field. field. The, the, the bet was for him was why not photography or wedding? Because it's okay each kind of photography, it's okay fashion, it's okay food, it's okay, but why not wedding in a, under an artistic uh, aspect? So we publish, I publish uh, with him, uh, with uh, I repeat, a major publisher in Italy, not a local publisher. A book uh, that tells the story of my career. He selected the, the curator, select the best photo for him of my career. And this is was important because after this, I I have a, a show an exhibition in an art gallery in Milan. So for the reason could be that uh, in Italy with my work. Uh, Probably when you say this, it means that the photo, wedding photo, is not uh, in the under, only under the aspect classic of wedding photo, but with the value of art. That's but sounds it, great. It's important because uh, I don't decide this. Okay, <laughs> <Someone> <laughs> not, not to say this is art, yeah. <laughs> but someone it's very important uh, to say this for me. Did this help you to get more jobs? No. No. <laughs> Actually no. No, but yes and no, I want to spend. Uh, more job, uh, the classical client uh, don't think that I... Because uh, at the moment there are always two different worlds. Uh, the art world and the uh, wedding couple world. <laughs> The wedding cover world probably they know that they are more famous. I can say this in Italy, but not necessarily directly. I I buy this. I want this photograph because it has. Uh, or, or, or I don't know anyway because nobody tell me <laughs> about this. <laughs> that they don't say this. But anyway, I think it, uh, not directly, but uh, it helps. Uh, it helps that a lot of photographers from Italy follow this event because they know that it's 
support that they have for, for the field, for the community of Wedding yeah. Dollar. No? It's something I have uh, some other publication after this. Probably I will go uh, with another, I don't know, I think to have another exhibition. We can try to develop this uh, because it's a new challenge. It's a, it's a, a new thing respect to the classical yeah. wedding story. Is that, so I'm curious, I, I would, would like to know I, um, what's happened, because uh, I sell photo, this is important to say, not only exhibition, yeah. just to say, because yeah, I, I have it. a tirage, they say tirage of yeah, the photo, yeah. they buy the photo, uh, the collector, art collector by the photo, like a piece of art, so this is co a brand new, complete yes. story. Yes, and I'm really proud of it because you're the first one that I heard of that brought the wedding photography yes. to art. Yes, because I repeat, because a curator had selected me, yeah. and uh, this is important to me because there is, uh, I don't believe about this right? because the journalist introduced me to this curator. To this, this curator. Curator. Yeah. He said to me, Why? This is a, a, there, there are. A, a, there is an authorial approach to the photography. I don't interest if it's a wedding. Yeah, it could yeah, be yeah, another thing, it's okay yeah, 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 to go for a, for a publication. Um, so if I want to get published, uh, let's say like an artist, uh, I should not wait at home for some creator to come and say you're an artist. Uh, should I do something about it? I want to be an artist tomorrow, you know? <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. You want to be an artist tomorrow? Yeah. No, 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 yeah, yeah, no, how to do? <laughs> yeah, how to do it, yeah. Ten, ten how steps, to be how to become an artist. Yeah. Uh, in my case, it's, uh, I don't think there is a particular road to, be <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not to follow. To I think in my case, I, uh, I know a journalist, a journalist of, from Canon, Italy, Canon. Uh, yeah, yeah, Canon. Yeah. Introduced me to this curator, this curator as a uh, because uh, the director of uh, a museum in, in Milan, Forma, the space Forma, this is very, very it's important space of a uh, photo exhibition. Uh, he said, it's okay, I like <laughs> Why we don't, what do you think to, for me, he asked me to, to contact Marsilio, editor, publisher, for a couple of months. Okay. Yes, of course. Yeah. They are okay. Then. In fact, the, the book has a uh, has good result in Italy. Yeah? Yeah. Old wedding photography by <laughs> this. Uh, yes, because it's an event in the, it's on Amazon, so the people can... Uh, they actually, in Italy, wedding photographers are proud of you? Because I'm proud of you. Oh. I think they are proud. I, I hope, I think they are proud. Yes, uh, so, sometimes we have some competi competitor, I don't know if some competitor is uh, proud of me, but usually I think that I receive a lot of, of uh, say, bravo. Yeah, yeah, bravo, bravo. But they say to me, yes, you work also for the, the field because uh, through this uh, new aspect you, you do something also for the wedding photography in general. In general yeah. So yeah. the people is, uh, I think, is happy. Yeah, that's why I'm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. To thank you. <laughs> so again, I'm. So that you know who you're talking to. I'm Daniel. We are a small wedding staff. It's a small community of wedding uh, photographers and videographers in Romania. And we're so happy that you're here, you all people are here to just push for better education in the field, to respect us more. In Romania, wedding photography is not so well, let's say. If I'm telling my teacher, my kid's teacher, I'm a wedding photographer, they just, yeah, really? Yeah, get a job. So it's not respected here, really? No, not at all. I just want to start by saying that you, you're young, famous, so well known. How do you do that? Everybody knows about you. How do you do that? Really? How do you do, you do this? Um, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> we didn't do this. Um, we didn't set out to become known or anything. Right. I think that's the difference. Is we, didn't yeah. never, we never tried to... This was no being like famous was never a goal ever. We just wanted to be good photographers. Okay, but 
if you step aside in your office and look back and say, what did those guys do to become so famous? Thinking about yourself. Yes. I never said questions would be easy. Um, do you have an answer? I mean, do you have an answer? Well, I think, like, I, I think we got lucky by our timing. Aaron and I both started shooting. Aaron started shooting weddings full time in 2004. I started shooting weddings the year later in 2005. And at that time, um, wedding photography hadn't ele been elevated to the level that it's at right now, which is amazing. Um, so it was much easier to stand out back then. I think if we could try to get started in 2015, it would be much harder for us to be at the. Um, where we're at right now, just because the talent is so immense, and it wasn't that immense in 2004, 2005. So just because of that, I think um, we were able to stand out from the other wedding photographers just because the yeah, kids weren't as good, amazing yeah. as they are right now, and they are amazing right now. Yeah. What's your main inspiration source? Like, where do you find those great ideas? Because oh. your your photos are like nothing else I've seen. Well, we're lucky that we shoot in different places every weekend, which I think helps a lot. We kind of thrive. I know I thrive off spontaneity. Uh, we're fortunate that we get to travel to different places, even if it's um, in some of the same cities we shoot in frequently, like New York. It's always a different but wedding venue. So um, it's the same for me. Yes. I never shot a, a photo like you. Yeah, but it's always like exciting. We never um, we never script any of our photography. We never have a plan going in. We just um, we we don't we don't even scout ahead of time. So when we get to the place, we quickly look around, see where the good light is, the interesting light, and find these little um, pieces that we think we could work with all day. That's the fun of it, the hunt. And also, Aaron and I both worked in newspapers before weddings, so we were kind of trained to like think really quickly on our feet with brand new people. So we never knew what our assignment was going in, but we instantly had to become friendly to them and we had to get them to like us and trust us so they would share their story with us. So I think that has helped us with weddings. And as far as infra in inspiration, I go to Magnum and Seven constantly. That's my inspiration. It really, it doesn't necessarily come from wedding photography. Wedding photographers, although there are so many great ones, but still, it's Magnum Photos and Seven Agency. It's where I go to when I want to look at real pictures. Is it easy for you to run a studio? No. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I'm a wedding photographer and I never been able to hire someone to work for me. Let's say, say for me and do what I do and earn more money. So. It is easy. Should you encourage people to create studios instead of working alone? No, I mean, our studio came about sort of accidentally, I guess, organically. We, we, we never planned to have associate photographers. It was just going to be the two of us. Well, it started out with Ben, and then I joined. But um, the associates started out as our interns, just our Photoshop guys. And then they ended up being really great photographers, naturally, and they just threw also a ton of practice. And um, an opportunity came up where we couldn't do a wedding. And we had a kind of a last minute inquiry that we couldn't do. So we said, oh, we'll try them out. And they did an amazing job. So we just went from there. Yeah, and at that point, we just didn't want to ever work without them. And so it was, a, it was a, that, at that point, it wasn't a family. It was just a business it was a family. And it's been that way ever since. So I would not suggest anyone follow our example with this whatsoever. Because <laughs> we've never approached it really like a business. It's always just been, like Aaron said, our organic. You know, yeah. the, the right guys found us, and then it, everything felt right instead of us searching them out. Right. You know what's amazing is that everyone in your studio is shooting pretty much the same, say, style. You know? How do you accomplish that? Because well, I well, I talked to Mauricio a lot about this the last couple of weeks, just because he's been back at our house, and I think one of the biggest things was that. We never told them what to do, ever. We just showed them kind of what we do, and then let them take it from there. So we never put rules on them, we never said you have to shoot like this, because we really wanted them to find their own vision. And even though we all kind of shoot similarly, I can still pinpoint a photo and say, oh, that was a Mauricio photo, yeah, yeah. or that was a Joseph photo, or that was an Aaron photo. Um, and so, it was just their personalities. It's their personalities that show in the photos more than any amount of teaching that yeah. any of us are, have ever done. That's great. If you, let's say, during the class, 
when will be your class on Thursday? Friday. 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 Friday class Friday. 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 If someone asks you, how can I become a better photographer? What to answer? Take a lot of photos. Practice, practice, practice. Practice. Yeah. Every single day. And and really, you've got to take a lot of pictures, but you also have to figure out what you like looking at, like what you find visually interesting. Because until you find that that uniqueness in the world that you, you're really attracted to, you're just going to try to take pictures of everything without honing in on what you really yeah. are interested in. So, and that's the hardest thing for photographers is actually figuring out what they like yeah. in life. It's like everything. It like People go through their whole lives and not really knowing what their quest is or what they should be doing in life. And photographers have that same journey where they have to figure out what they find interesting in the world. And if they show that, then their pictures are their vision. And they don't have to search for their vision anymore. They just take pictures of what they like. And it's that simple. How can you reach that level of an understanding of what I like? What should I do? I think by taking a lot of pictures, you slowly figure out what works for you and what doesn't. And you also look at a lot of photographers, figure out what you like in their pictures, and you can apply it to yours. It's more difficult to like decide on a style in the beginning. You just By taking yeah. many, many photos, eventually a style will begin to emerge. Okay. And there's a big difference between finding inspiration and just blatant copying. In web photography, you have a lot of copycats. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't look at other photographers and, and find out that the pull inspiration for what you like best about their style, their vision, and then apply it to you. And then the culmination of all those photographers will kind of help you define yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good luck with the Thank Friday. You. Thank you for bringing us to Romania. Thank you. <laughs> you have a great voice. Yeah, yeah really. Not so great English, but I am trying. No, you'd be great. <laughs>